This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Whoa! Some of you might not realize this, but Hanafuda is actually the origins of Nintendo as a company. If you simply Google Nintendo, you can see that they were founded in 1889 making handmade Hanafuda cards. And up until a few weeks ago, I used to just think it was a fun piece of trivia. Oh yeah, that's nice. Nintendo used to appeal to gambling. But apart from a few facts from videos I've seen on YouTube, I knew nothing about Hanafuda. But then I bought this game with a ridiculously long title and I thought, whoa, I recognize that. Let's play it. And to be honest, when I first started playing it, I didn't know what was going on. I just thought the slap sound effects were nice. But after actually taking the time to learn it, this game becomes insanely addictive. And so after realizing how much fun you could have with this game, I tried getting my friend Ivan to play it with me. And I was having a great time because I knew what I was doing. But Ivan, on the other hand, didn't really seem to take a liking to it. You were one away from three lights. <laughs> you were just saying words to me. You said I was one card away from three lights. I don't know what the fuck that means. Good man. No. It's fun. No, I'm so tired. It's 3.30 in the morning. I'm not playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> I just got poetry slips. That's, I don't fucking care. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and since that night of lag infested checkers and something apparently called unfairness, Ivan has refused to play this game with me. And so in retaliation to Ivan and everyone else who is Hanafuda inept, I'm making this video to explain how to play Hanafuda, why it's so cool, and those are the only two things. I don't have a third point. So when you think about Nintendo nowadays, you don't really think of them as a 130 year old card company. And it's even weirder to think that Mario has only been around for 35 of those years. But even with the shift over to video games, they haven't forgotten their history, which is super admirable. Like you can find references to Hanafuda in a bunch of Nintendo stuff. There's Mario variations of the cards, Kirby variations of the cards, Pokemon variations of the cards, Mario Pokemon variations of the cards. Bowser's Kingdom in Mario Odyssey has them as that kingdom sticker. And I'm pretty sure some of the cards are even gliders in Mario Kart Tour, so that's fun. Put that in Mario Kart 9, please. And even though Nintendo have been a video game company since the 1980s, it's still really cool to see them make nods to their history like this. And they just re-released the Mario ones in Europe, and I tried to make a purchase, but my card got declined. Thanks, Nationwide! So just like regular playing cards, you can play a bunch of different games with Hanafuda, but the one in Clubhouse Games, and therefore the only one I know how to play, is Koi Koi. Breaking it down as simply as possible, Hanafuda is just a matching game. You match cards in your hand with cards on the table, and you can use these cards you've matched to create card combos called sets. Now in terms of playing it, when I first saw this, I didn't know what was going on. But at some point in the game, you actually unlock this Mario set of cards, which used to be a Club Nintendo reward. And since you know these characters, it makes learning the game and knowing what each card does way easier to remember. I mean, the game will probably still be kind of confusing. But now it can be confusing with a hat. Now whilst regular playing cards have the four suits being diamonds, spades, hearts and clubs with 13 cards for each, Hanafuda has a suit for every month of the year with four cards in each. But how can you tell what cards are from what month? Since Hanafuda literally means flower card, each month has a signature plant. So January is pine, February is plum blossom, March is cherry blossom, April is wisteria, I never heard of that before, May is iris, June is pony, peony, July is bush clover, August is sasuke grass, September is mum, well, it's actually Christmas mums, but Animal Crossing. October is Maple, November is Willow, and December is Port Palo. I can't pronounce any of these. Every game, you start with three cards on the table. Whichever player picks the card with the earliest month gets to play first, or if you're playing in real life, also becomes the dealer. After this is decided, the deck shuffles, and player one, player two, and the table each are given eight cards. Now, when it's your turn, you want to find a card in your hand that belongs to the same suit as one of the cards on the table. Then you can match the cards and collect them face up to the right of you. But if you don't have a card that can match with a card on the table, then you just have to take one of your cards and give it to the table. And making it sound like the table is sentient, it's not. You can't play as the table. But wait a second. I don't remember that card being there. Every time you do the slap or miserably give up your card, you draw a new card from the deck and place it on the table. However, if that card can be matched with a card already out on the table, you collect that pair of cards too in that round, meaning you can get four cards in a single turn if you're lucky. And each round, you and your opponent keep matching cards until one of you completes a set and racks in the points it's worth. Now something to bear in mind is that sets are made up of card types. What is a card type? Okay, well there's four types of cards in Hanafuda. There's lights, seeds, poetry slips, and chaffs. Lights have the most value, seeds have the second, poetry the third, and chaffs fourth. Now probably the easiest sets to get are ones made up of the same card type, like 10 chaffs, 5 of any poetry slips, or 5 seeds. But then we have sets like Boar Deer Butterfly, Red Poetry Slips, Blue Poetry Slips, or the Lights with Rain sets, which require specific cards to make those sets. And then you have Cherry Blossom Viewing and Moon Viewing, which are the weirdest ones because they are both made up of one light card and one seed card. Having these more specific sets like Boar Deer Butterfly or 
cherry blossom viewing are really cool, but it definitely makes some cards feel a lot more worthless than others. Like Yoshi and Lakitu are a lot less cool than Wario or Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant is actually terrifying. It's the best card in the game. If you want to learn the cards off by heart, a good way to think of it is the more detailed the design of a card, the more value it has. And once you complete a set and the big letters come up on screen, you can either finish and get those points of what your set is worth, or you can live life dangerously and koi koi, giving yourself a chance to get more sets and make more points. However, this also gives your opponent a second chance to score a set, and if they score a set after you've koi koi they'll get double points, and you'll get zilch. And whoever wins the round gets first dibs next round. So Ivan, what do you think of Hanafuda now, huh? I still have no idea what I'm doing. Fantastic, that's what I want to hear. You are a horrible teacher. Yeah, that's fantastic. How is that a good thing? Because the online learning community Skillshare is the cure to bad learning experiences. I wasn't that bad, was I? Having an online learning community is the best cure to having a bored brain. I mean, yeah, I could use brain training or brain age to keep my brain active, but sometimes I don't want to be reminded that my brain age is 54. Sometimes I just want to relax and learn something new without any added stress to it. And Skillshare is probably as stress-free as you can get. The most stressful thing you can do in Skillshare is choosing a class because there is literally thousands. And recently, I've been wanting to learn Procreate for a while. So I've been watching Digital Illustration by Jaram Vogel. After seriously messing up my wrists, I've been feeling pretty anti-keyboard recently, and after hearing the praise Procreate's been given, this is definitely one of the best ways to learn it. And instead of having like 40 tabs across the internet of how to learn it and tips and tricks and what to do, having just this one Skillshare tab, I have a convenience of having everything I need to know on one single page. And with Skillshare, you can discover new classes all the time, you only have to pay $10 a month with an annual subscription, and you don't have to be worried about being called old. And if you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link at the top of the description, you'll get two months of Skillshare premium for completely free. And even if you're on the fence on if you're going to use Skillshare or not, it's still worth checking out because by signing up, it really helps support the channel and lets me do what I love for a living. Remember to click the link if you want two months free, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping out the channel. That's a kiss sound effect, by the way. And now that you know the rules, I'm just going to give a couple tips which I think are good to know slash interesting and yeah. Tip number one, opponent sets. Now something to take into account once you've played a few games is that both you and your opponent can see each other's matched cards and how close each of you are to completing sets. So once you start to memorize the cards and what cards are in what sets, you can start taking this a lot more into account. Like maybe you could take a card that they really need or wait to match a certain card you've been holding on to to make them think that it's still in the deck. Tip number two, card types. Something else which I think is really good to know is that not every month has each card type. Even though there are four types of cards and there are four cards in each month, Month, does not mean that there's four different types of cards for every month. Unless you're November, which is actually the only month that does that. Most months seem to follow the pattern of one light or seed, one poetry slip, and two chaffs. But August, November, and December don't. And when you look at all the months together, they stand out as a bit odd. This doesn't really mean anything, but I think it's just interesting to know and might come in handy when playing. When I had my first chance to play Hanafuda, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know if it was going to be good, bad, Origami King, but it ended up being one of my favorite card games ever. And if yourself or you and a friend ever get a chance to play it, I highly recommend it. Not only because it's a part of Nintendo's history, but also because it's just plain fun. Just whatever you do, do not play Renegade on Clubhouse games. That game is scarring. Hey guys, Post Video Mads here. Just thought I'd say thank you so much for watching the video to the end. I know it's kind of a weird topic, Hanafuda. Maybe not that many people know about it, but I'm really passionate about playing this. I thought, you know what? I should make a whole video about it. So thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Well, I probably can't say thank you enough. Sorry that this video took so long to come out. I've had a really big problem with my wrists and been in a lot of pain. So I try to be more easy on myself with this video and that's why it took so long. It'll probably be like that for the next video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and have all the notifications on and all that malarkey. And apart from that, subscribe to my friend Jack who helps make these videos look as pretty as they do. And watch these videos in the meantime because I'm slow. <laughs>